Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'm going to serve as your host today. We'll get to our presentation in a moment, but I wanted to share just a few points of logistics and then kind of frame up the webinar kind of in a larger context. So just a few logistics to start with. Due to the short duration of our session today, we're not going to have time for questions and answers at the end. Also, please note that this session is being recorded and we'll make this available shortly after we end. Uh, feel free to share this with others in your organization once we send you a link to the recording. So just a bit of context for today's webinar. As you may know, today's webinar is actually number three in a three-part series that we've done aimed at helping those in HR better understand their role in supporting a lean enterprise. Uh, this series has been a lead up to the annual Lean People Development Summit, which you may have heard of, uh, also previously was known as the Lean HR Summit. The Lean People Development Summit is taking place September 11th and 12th in the beautiful city of Savannah, Georgia. Today's facilitator, Susan Camacho of Gemline, uh, sits on a steering committee for this event, uh, which really can be described as being developed by HR professionals for HR professionals. Now, th that doesn't mean that if you're a non-HR person that you're not invited to the Lean People Development Summit, because you are. Uh, as, as we all know, HR needs partners, not only in operations, but really throughout the organization. So we have a fair representation uh, across the spectrum uh, with a healthy dose of human resource professionals as well as continuous improvement. And again, a fair representation across the organization. Obviously, there are many unique challenges that uh, HR professionals face today with hiring, training, uh, retaining a skilled workforce, and what I'm excited about with the Lean People Development Summit is that the committee, under the leadership of Cheryl Jekyll, who authored the book uh, Lean HR, has put together uh, uh, a or an agenda of immensely interesting companies with immensely interesting stories of how they develop people in their organizations. And you can see some of the companies there on the slide that you can hear from during the summit. So the summit is just one month away. Uh, if developing people is a known gap in your organization, uh, don't wait until fall of 2018 uh, to begin learning and addressing these issues. If you register by Friday for the Lean People Development Summit using the discount code webinar, you'll receive 10% off the standard registration fee. Uh, if you have identified, if you if you identify just one of the biggest challenges you face in this area, came to the summit seeking a solution to that one problem, I guarantee you'll walk away with an enormous return on your summit investment as you seek some resolution to those issues. So anyway, I have heard the summits described as an incubator because what happens in the couple days of a summit. Uh, you'll get far more done than you might in six to 12 months on your own. So please do join us and you'll be able to meet today's facilitator face to face. So with that said, let me introduce our presenter today. Susan Camacho is HR manager uh, for Gemline and uh, Susan, you probably will deny this, but uh, really is a pioneer in this area. Uh, Susan Susan has been working in HR and utilizing improvement tools and philosophies and really has seen uh, Jim Lyons HR department uh, integrate processes and people into an engaged uh, culture. So Susan, with, with that said, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you run with it. Great. Thank you so much, Dwayne, and welcome, everyone. Very excited to be here with all of you this afternoon. As Dwayne mentioned, I am the HR manager at Gemline. Gemline is one of the top 10 suppliers of promotional products in the nation. We've been in business for about 60 years. We're privately held, 
And we've actually been on our lean journey for about 13 to 14 years. And for those of you who are in the process of also creating your own journey, you know that it's just that. <laughs> it's this process that we have to work through in order to create this journey that will actually engage our workforce in a completely different way. And one of the things that we've learned here at Gemline is that our culture is just as important as all of the wonderful tools that come with lean manufacturing. As with most organizations, our lean journey actually began in manufacturing when we first brought it on board here to Gemline. And about eight to nine years ago, it actually started getting a lot of traction in all of our administration areas. Um, and there was HR in the background saying, yeah, go, go make it happen. We made sure that the training was available and really encouraged people to get involved. Um, but as Dwayne said, it, it took us about five years to kind of realize, you know what, we as HR could definitely utilize these tools as well and realized that there was a host of opportunity for HR to truly engage uh, in the lean philosophies and the tools. So that's part of what we're doing. It's part of the sharing that we are trying to do with other organizations across the country. And the biggest part of that is, I believe, HR's role in helping to develop a culture with lean that is certainly sustainable, uh, that people want to engage with, and that is really our purpose for our uh, time together today. When we decided that we wanted to go on this lean journey here at Gemline, we approached changing our culture in a variety of different ways. And as many organizations, we felt that certainly training was the, the first and foremost way to make that happen. So we went off and we started training everybody in 6S and A3s and Kaizens and Kanbans and all those lovely terminologies that we use when it comes to lean. And that certainly was helpful and profitable and it made people get excited about lean. And then we also provided other problem-solving opportunities, such as getting involved in a Kaizen opportunity or getting people around the table on an A3. And we found that, okay, we were engaging some, some more people there as well. And probably our largest area of engagement has come in our very structured idea generation system, which has been uh, a part of our culture here for about five years. And it is a structured system for ideas, helping all of our people to get engaged in a variety of different ways. Uh, and it's been really exciting to watch all of this unfold as we move forward throughout our journey on Lean. Certainly what we came to realize, though, is that even though we had a lot of the same terminology going on in our organization, there's something that seemed to be missing from an organizational culture perspective. And this is really where we decided we needed some help. <laughs> we sat down as a leadership team uh, and we sat down with a variety of associates and said, what is our culture here at Gemline now that we've started down this lean journey? And we really began to ask ourselves some of those, those big questions. One of the things that we realized in some of this learning was that we would have one department that was heavily involved in problem solving and they would see the culture at Gemline to be more from a problem solving perspective. We had another department that was very much into idea generation, so they were looking at it from a little bit different lens. And still we had others that were just starting maybe on their lean journey, so, so they were still doing some questioning about what do these terms mean and, and what do they bring my organization. What we ended up realizing is that we didn't have any actual visual as we were walking through this. So we were trying to define our culture by activities that were happening, but we didn't have a common theme happening or a common thread that was going on between our departments in regards to culture. And what we realized is that we had no expectations. We didn't set any expectations of what our culture should be. So our first step was we had no visuals. It seemed a bit chaotic. We really didn't have that common thread. We needed to go learn. And that was exactly what Gemline started doing. Uh, we started evaluating the pros and cons of having an actual visual for our culture, and we started going to other companies and gambling and to see what did they have? How could we learn from them? And one of the greatest learnings that we had was that the companies who actually had a visual, there was a connection in their organization, that they had a, a ability to connect people and engage people, and they all seem to be on this common goal or this common mission. So as we were realizing we did not have that thread that works for our whole organization, those who had an actual visual tied to their culture seemed to have that. 
The other thing that we realized from a leadership team perspective is that we all kind of assumed that the culture was there, that by doing all these activities we were doing from training and problem solving and idea generation, that our culture was just becoming inherent. But what we realized is that it wasn't the same across the board. We were looking for that level of consistency, that level of full engagement from everybody. So we knew we had some work to do. We did decide that we wanted to do a visual for culture and we needed to make some things happen. So what were we going to use? Well, one of the things that we realized is that we needed to do some careful planning. And I will share with you that this whole process actually took our organization between 10 to 12 months to actually come to fruition. So there was a lot of careful planning involved because we really wanted to make it right. If we were going to put out a visual about our culture to share with our entire organization and certainly with customers as they came through, we needed to do some heavy-duty work behind it. So we looked at it from a two-way perspective. We looked at it in the fact that we needed to put words on our visual that really had three different entities to it. The first one was they needed to be relatable. These words really needed to be conducive to everybody in our organization, whether you were in operations or whether you were in administration. We really wanted to make sure that we had something cohesive. We also knew that we wanted our words to be definable. We wanted people to actually understand what they meant. And that meant, in many cases, changing some words around so that we were able to say, these are the words that mean something to everybody. And then first, uh, lastly, we really wanted them to be livable. What are those examples that we could see in our organization of the words on this house being able to be lived out? And that was going to be the most important thing. So there was a lot of vetting out <laughs> to make sure that what we were doing was going to be key and right for us. We also wanted to make sure that we had a visual to put these words into. And this visual really needed to mean something. Many of us are very familiar with the Toyota Production Systems house and that that particular visual meant a lot. And as we went through many of our trainings, certainly that house became a, a big part of our understanding of lean and the lean concepts and philosophies. So the house had some meaning there. But the house also had a greater meaning for us. We are a privately held company. We are a company of family. We have a lot of family members that work for our company. And we have a lot of people who have been here a long period of time, 20, 30 years. If we wanted them to change, there was something that we needed to provide them that was still a constant. And that feeling of family needed to stay there. So as you can see, when we were putting all of this together and taking the time, we wanted to take the words and the visual that was actually going to mean something. And lastly, we wanted to make sure that we had an actual focal point to our visual, something that actually would tie in not, our, not just our employees, but certainly our customers as well. So drum roll, please. What did we end up using? Well, as you can see, our answer has been the visual that you see there on the right, our GPS house. Now, GPS for us means GEM Performance System. And our performance system actually ties in a lot of the different factors, such as process improvement, idea generation, um, the ability to do gembas or go sees. Those types of things are important to us. So as you can see, this house was created, and it has provided much value. And I'll share with you a little bit about how we got it off the page and got it living a little bit. What you actually are seeing is the second version of our house. Uh, we have worked hard to PDCA this process over the last couple of years, and we originally had 12 foundational values at the bottom and realized that that was just way too many. We needed to get it down to six so that people could remember them and support them in, in a common fashion. As I mentioned earlier, we wanted that key focal point. And for us, that word of respect means much in our particular environment. We have a diverse workforce and respect has always been important to us. So to actually see it in print and focus it for our associates was very, very important. Now, as we said earlier, we had this ability to think that everything that we were doing in our culture, we assumed everybody was on the same page. But I believe strongly that as we were trying to define our culture, making it visual was extremely important. The other thing I'd like to mention is when we decided to take lean philosophies and bring them into administration, 
one of the things we decided to do was take the word lean out of our organization and insert the air words of continuous improvement. Obviously, they're interchangeable, but in our world, those particular two words uh, have replaced lean in a very positive aspect. Our customer focus, as you can see right at the top of that house, exceptional customer value, has certainly been socialized so that people understand that it's not just our external customers, but our internal customers as well. So now that we have the visual and now that we have the words that we believe are truly the essence of our particular organization, how are we going to socialize it? Well, we got it out there. It was everywhere. <laughs> in fact, we have posters all over our facility. It's in every HR office, every leader's office, every showroom or conference room that we have, in our hallways, in our cafeteria. It is something that we really believe in and we see it quite a bit as you walk through our actual facility. When we rolled out this particular house, we actually also gave it to all of our associates on a magnet. They could put it on their lockers. They could put it on whiteboards, uh, really trying to get it out there so that everybody could see it. And as I mentioned earlier, we're a promotional products company. And one of the things that we found happening where that associate seemed excited about it and they actually were starting to screen it on their work clothes and things of that nature. So it was getting quite a bit of visual attention as we were moving forward. So we were excited to see that as we were socializing it, it really made sense and people seemed to be drawn to it. It was that common thread that we were looking for. So now we have our visual, we were getting it out, people were starting to see it, but now we needed to do something with it. We needed to, again, get it off the page and start working with it so that it really became part of our organization. And to date, I have to share that this was actually the largest training and development effort we have had. We put a lot of attention and time and an action plan around how were we going to make sure that these words actually meant something. So we started with our management team. We have about 50 leaders, ranging from team leaders to vice presidents here. And we actually took that group of 50 and divided them into much smaller groups of five, so 10 groups of five people each. And we brought those groups together over an eight-week period, uh, once a week, to actually define the words that were on the house. Now, they weren't allowed to have a Webster's Dictionary. There was no dictionary.com. These five people actually came into a room and started defining what did the word integrity mean? What did the word humility mean? And through those efforts, through those opportunities to sit cross-functionally, people got a huge understanding of this is how we want our organization to be. This is our culture. This is who we are trying to define ourselves with. The other part of this, and again, we wanted these words to be livable. So we asked our leadership team members when they were in these small groups to not only define the words, but let's give some examples. When did they see the word engagement in use? When did they see the word respect in use? And so there was a wonderful sharing opportunity, again, cross-functionally, for these managers to better understand how they can actually share some of those examples. And then, as any good lean organization should, let's talk about when we didn't see the word truth or trust in work and better understand, okay, great, we got to see the opportunity of when it was good, but when, when did we make some errors? When did we make some mistakes? And how can we get better at doing those types of things? So there was a lot of opportunity for us to have a honesty in these small groups. Um, there was a huge sense of psych safety involved because we started admitting, okay, these were some of the things that we're not doing well, and how can we get better at those things? An incredibly impactful exercise. And it was one that we, qu quite frankly, have utilized that format moving forward and other items or systems that we roll out, we finally realized that that small group, the ability for people to really engage with each other was huge. And we were finally able to visualize those words and not just define them. So through all of this, we actually ended up coining the phrase, go to the house, because uh, people started going, actually physically going to one of the houses that were actually put up throughout the facility to better understand how do we get these things off the page and make them visual. So defining those words, bringing examples to life from a leadership perspective, finally gave that team something that they could pull on and work with when they were trying to have coaching conversations with their associates. Well, that covered the leadership team. Yeah, what do we do with all of our associates in our facility to help ensure that this is something that we can do and make sure that everybody's engaged with it? 
when we took a playbook from the managers and we actually worked with our rest of our associates, again, in cross-functional teams, a little bit larger this time. They were in groups of 20. And we figured, well, you know what? If we're going to get them for eight weeks, an hour a week, let's not just focus on the house, but this might be a great opportunity to also refocus them on some of the CI or lean terminology that we want them to go with. So we actually utilized the book, Everything I Learned About Lean, I Learned in First Grade. Uh, this has been an incredible uh, foundational opportunity for us to get everybody on the same page in an understanding of lean and continuous improvement terminology. Uh, it is a fairly easy to read book, but it is able for us to share with our associates the value of the, the philosophy that we are living our culture by. All of our associates had homework. And that homework involved them taking their learnings and seeing how the GPS house and, for instance, what a Kanban is and bringing those things together back to their daily activities for work. It's been a huge area for engagement for us, certainly, again, cross-functionally, but it also gets people going back into their workforces to be able to see this is how this is used or this is why it means that. And every year, we actually do this same activity. We call it GPS house training. And we share it with all of our new hires so that, again, we can establish that one foundational value across the organization. Now, we had some challenges with this because not all of our workforce actually speaks English. So we were able to sit down and take some of the summaries from the book, translate them into Spanish, and still have a very robust and engaging conversation really bringing the words off the house for our associates to better understand and utilize in their daily interactions with each other. I think one story that just always stands out with me is that we had a Spanish-speaking associate who came up to me, made sure that he grabbed a translator, and shared with me that he took that house once he had the training and understood it. And he took his magnet and he went home and put it on his refrigerator and had the rest of his family stand around because he wanted his family dynamics to be as strong as the dynamics that he was getting internally at his workplace because those words meant so much to him. And I thought, you know, if we were going to try to change culture, it seemed like we were going in the right direction when I heard that story. It was fairly impactful and our, our associates really got a lot from that. So we were able to get some of this training done, and people were really starting to socialize the house and talking about it. And as we said, going to the house became a huge phrase for us. Well, that's all well and good, but now how do we measure the effectiveness of this? Are we actually making that impact? And so what we did is we actually pulled it against our performance appraisals. So we took the words off the house and, again, started integrating them into different areas, such as our performance appraisal form or any types of visuals that we are going to have posted throughout our organization. We changed that appraisal to align with the house. We actually engaged more of that idea generation system and put more visuals up there so that people, again, could see where the value of that was coming from. But what we also realized that our work relationships were changing. The dynamics were changing in the work relationships. People really began supporting the house and realizing the value of that house and the importance. And what we also realized is that we were having less tolerance for behavior that was not supporting the house. People utilized this in communications and discussions. And we were actually even putting it everywhere that people could get to it easily so that they could have those dynamic discussions amongst each other. So how do we use it? What are some of the byproducts? Well, from an HR standpoint, this has been a game changer for us. We've actually watched our culture change very dramatically much quicker than we could have anticipated from a training or a development or utilizing some of the actual lean tools. Having this visual that everybody could participate with and, again, have that common thread has actually led to a reduction in miscommunication and employee relation issues in HR. And that was certainly a byproduct that we hadn't anticipated. But as I spoke to our HR business partners, it was very clear that we were spending less time doing some, some very minimal miscommunications that might have happened, sitting down with people trying to work through some of those things. And people were utilizing the words on that house to try to explain how they were feeling if they felt poorly about a certain situation. We also had managers come to us and say, wow, I finally have a tool that I can use for some of this soft skill stuff that we've been trying to coach people on, but didn't have anything that we could actually go back to. 
So setting expectations from a value perspective became very, very clear. Setting expectations about integrity and doing the right thing. Setting expectations about telling the truth or creating a relationship of trust. All those types of things that, again, were more soft skill oriented or may not have had very specific values attached to it were now very visual throughout our entire organization. As we mentioned, we also PDCA this. So uh, within the last year or two, we actually changed it and put some of those new words on it to be able to gain even greater consistency amongst our organization. And now we also measure it in all of those areas that I shared with you, whether it's performance appraisal or idea generation visuals. Uh, we actually even do surveys to help to understand, is the house actually being socialized continuously and sustainably? And when we see that there's gaps, we know that we have to start filling those gaps. So it gives us that opportunity to make sure that this visual continues to be the part of the culture that's important for us, especially from an ethically standpoint. So our employee relationships have gotten better. Our customers value it. They love seeing the house in this visual when they come through our doors. It's Gemline defined. It's specific for our organization, yet it's words that are transferable throughout our organization. And the last thing I want to share with you, it has helped our recruiting and onboarding efforts in a byproduct that we had never, ever expected. When we have new people who are coming in for interviews and they see our house, they get a very quick snapshot of the culture of our organization. And they get to say, you know, is this the type of organization that I want to play in or not? And it helps us to either vet out candidates that we may not uh, engage with as, as far as our organization goes, or it may bring them in. And I actually had a, a VP who came to me a couple of days ago who said, you know, when I first joined here, and it was just a couple of years ago, and I saw that house, I knew that this was the organization I wanted to work for. And actually, I'm going to be speaking, as uh, Dwayne had mentioned, I'm going to be speaking on the topic of recruiting and onboarding and how to use some of your values and your culture visuals in order to gain support from that in regards to recruiting, onboarding, getting people on board to your culture quicker, faster, easier. Uh, and that's one of the topics I'm actually going to be talking about at the Lean People Development in Savannah on September 11th and 12th. And I would really love to see you guys there. If this is a topic that interests you or maybe you believe uh, some of your managers or HR staff could benefit from that, we'd love to see you down in Savannah during September in order to really engage with each other and learn from each other more. I've included my email address here at the last slide. I would love to hear from you. If you have questions about today's presentation or hopefully even feedback, I would love the feedback. Um, one of the things that I was sharing with Dwayne and earlier on is this is my first webinar that I've ever done. So I would really appreciate you sharing some feedback uh, in order so that we can make sure that this is done better each and every time. I thank you for your time today. I hope to see you in Savannah. Would love to see you down there. Have a great, great day. Thanks, Dwayne. Hey, Susan, thank you. Uh... Thank you so much, not only for our presentation today, but just for your role in kind of helping shape and define the, the Lean People Development Summit. Really appreciate that. Uh, and I appreciate, too, some of the things that you modeled here. One, you know, by giving out your email address and asking for feedback on, on your first webinar, uh, but also that you're willing to answer questions. And, and, you know, you've been to the Lean HR Summit a number of times, and I think that's one of the unique qualities about that particular group of people that gets together is there's an openness and a willingness to share. Um, and so thank you for, for modeling that uh, even here in this, this kind of format. Um, wanted to, uh, to just kind of wrap things up here. Uh, what, if you ask yourself, what might you learn if you were able to sit down and have uh, breakfast or lunch with Susan, if you could ask some deeper probing questions. Uh, what might you learn by sitting down with those from Boeing, Capital One, MetLife, e j Gallo Winery, Ingersoll Rand, and, and literally a host of other uh, thought leaders in this space? Because that's what we're doing with the Lean People Development Summit. We're creating this environment for you to come and learn, to share, to network with uh, some very impressive 
uh, thought leaders in this area who have perhaps maybe they're a few steps ahead of you maybe you're right where they are uh, but we can all learn and share uh, to, to kind of propel our, our journeys further so th this I can promise you that there is no other event where you will find the intense focus on the subject of HR's role in the Lean Enterprise than, than what you'll find at the Lean People Development Summit. That is its singular purpose, is to bridge that gap between human resources, lean operations, and allowing HR to build the people that support a, uh, an organization of continuous improvement. So please do join us uh, in Savannah uh, September 11th and 12th, as Susan mentioned and I mentioned earlier, uh, you can register for the summit using the discount code WEBINAR and you will receive 10% off. Now that is applicable not only to you, but that's uh, available to anyone in your organization. So feel free to share the recording of this webinar, which I'll share with you shortly. Um, and they, uh, they are welcome to use this discount code as well to join you. I also wanted to mention that later in the week, we are also holding uh, what's called the Lean Accounting and Management Summit. This is one of our longest running events, uh, now heading into its 13th year. So it's a very unique week where we're starting off with the development of people, and then the end of the week, you could really kind of define it as developing the processes, developing the management system. Uh, so it's a, a unique look at the lean enterprise from beginning of the week to the end of the week. Now you may or may not come for the entire week, but certainly share this with those in accounting and other management roles in your organization as they may very well benefit from the event that's happening on Thursday and Friday of that week. So again, Susan, thank you for your time today. I look forward to seeing you in Savannah and perhaps uh, Same enjoying thing, Dwayne. Some... It'll be a fun time. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to Savannah before, Susan? I have not. It's my first time to Savannah. I'm looking forward oh, to going. Excellent. Make sure you uh, pick my brain for uh, a number of the, the restaurants, that, uh, like the Pink House <laughs> or Paula Dean's Restaurant. Good, excellent. good Southern, good Southern <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Great. So again, Susan, thank you, and thank you everyone for participating in today's session, and we'll see you in Savannah. Sounds great. Have a great day, everyone.